Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Why, hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, we want to, again, encourage everybody, if, if you are not yet subscribed to our Patreon channel, you can do so for as little as $1 a month. Uh, when you pay for a year in advance, it comes down to $10.80 does help us uh, to keep going and don't <laughs> dedicating so much time to putting together these videos um, and so we definitely appreciate it and on patreon we get exclusive several times each week this was all about what many preppers miss prepping with wisdom so again we welcome you over there yes and we want to say a huge thank you to sheena she is our newest patreon who keeps us up and running. Thank you so much, Sheena. Thank you so much, Sheena, and thank all you guys for being with us. Um, this is a video that is, it, there's just so many tangents you could go off on. It's just incredible, really. The depths of what we have going on, which some will just simply say, this is all just, it's, it's the will of God. And just leave it at that. But in that statement, it's not stating clearly what's really going on here. There is so much more than just simply the will of God for one. Which God? Which God? I mean, are you talking about the creator of this universe? Because if you are talking about the creator of this universe, uh, well, you know, it, it, it's not that accurate. It, it's really not. And the it's all right there if people will just look and when we look to today we are looking at something that's happened before many times as you're looking at this a for aleph over the united states a aleph it, it, you know, you could see it as the anarchy sign you could also see it as first letter of the english alphabet or the, the first letter of the hebrew alphabet and the timing over seven years, North Americans will enjoy these eclipses, these these amazing eclipses. Again, started August 21st, 2017, and we had three, um, three big major hurricanes right after that uh, that developed, and it just seemed like everything went crazy after that first one. And, you know, the energies of that eclipse may be what blessed me with the best woman in the world <laughs> he's so sweet he knows all the right things to say no i mean that uh 2017 eclipse i was in nevada and the energy that i felt while that eclipse was doing its thing was no, i've never felt it before and i I, it felt like a thousand spirits just walked right through my body. I know I changed some type of frequency. Something in me changed so huge. And my my whole life changed after that. I mean, everything. There was a certain things that fell in a sequence of order, and including, you know, going to uh, Four Corners and going to a holy place. And I had a, a, a walk-in, a shamanic walk-in, and it just happened to be when we were there at uh, Monument Valley, the last shaman of that particular tribe had died that day. And there was a storm that night and everything changed about me. I mean, uh, my body, my hair, my, my lifestyle, my attitude, my everything. I, I can't tell you how many weird turns of luck or call it whatever you will, um, happened after that eclipse. And it was so palatable. And I don't think that I'm special in any way. I think we all are in for some big changes. But the problem is, it's like they try to disrupt these changes in any way, shape, or form with people getting on their path, uh, moving up in frequency because of the things that happen after the eclipse, which we are going to talk about. Oh, yes, absolutely. And I and I do think that it's uh, a part of what makes Cindy uh, Cindy is is perhaps the blessings of that shaman have have settled in on her as she is somebody with a very shamanic tradition and background uh, and natural gifts. And so everything has uh, increased. And if you had met her pre eclipse, 
you would see a woman that not only was like 70 pounds heavier and the energies just surrounding her totally totally different and so she just completely changed uh, after that and she got on her path is the reality and she's doing what she's supposed to be doing so interesting um, we had heard about Nineveh and this one saying seven Salem's Salem's passed over on 821 2017 eclipse seven years later we have another eclipse passing over another Salem Kentucky yeah but how about the Ninevehs, right? We had all the Ninevehs. And there's even little notes come out in Snopes. Snopes was trying to downplay the Nineveh thing, saying, nope, nope, that's not true. There's only two Ninevehs that went over. And just because, you know, they're laying in the yellow here instead of directly over the totality of the eclipse. No, but see, the thing is, say, who, who named these towns? Look into who named these towns. Because, again, the secret societies control the politics. The secret societies control really everything because they're a much bigger part of the control system uh, than most would realize. And, and they are ultimately going back uh, to the god gods, etc. You know, again, that term, I, I think we should just kind of erase that whole word and be very specific you know either say the source of all things the creator of this universe or you know other words that were used in hebrew they see the problem is translation it's all about translation and mistranslation and purposeful mistranslation over years because this does happen yeah, you know, Salem, it has some pretty curious translations to it. Shalom, a lot, a lot of words that mean peace. So it's just curious that so many of these words in the Bible and in our history are right on this eclipse where the X marks the spot and very, very close to it. It's definitely, definitely something that is happening um for us. I don't want to say to us. It's happening for us. But I, I do think that there's going to be some bumpy, bumpy roads sometime after the eclipse. Absolutely. Now, when Nineveh, the whole story of Nineveh, Nineveh, the great city, right? A great city, just like Babylon the Great. This, this is old Nineveh, still in ruins. This is near Mosul. Now, how many times do we hear Mosul during the Iraq wars? Why is it obliterated and bombed to crap well because they're hiding the real history this is what they always do so we we have the biblical story of jonah and his going to nineveh and telling the king there oh repent take on sackcloth cover yourself in ashes because your city will be destroyed if you don't change your ways and we have the connection to eclipses, harbingers of doom and gloom and death and change and the destruction of an empire and perhaps the beginning of a new empire. All this stuff goes together. When you look to Salem, at Salem or Shalem, ancient Middle Eastern town mentioned in the Bible, it's referenced in the following biblical passages. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. He was the priest of the Most High God. Ooh, now again, we need to go into the actual translations. In Salem, also in his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. So the name refers to the royal city of Melchizedek and is traditionally identified with Jerusalem, also mentioned in Hebrews 7. And the Deuterocanonical Deutero book of the book of Judith mentions the valley of Salem or Shalem or Shalim. Interesting, is it not? Now, Melchizedek is very, very interesting because Melchizedek is a priest of the Most High God. <clears throat> Why doesn't it translate literally to Yahweh? Because it doesn't. Uh, that's interesting, you know, El Elyon. And the, the realization is there were a lot of different titles for the gods. And they all get basically translated as Lord or God. But they were different for a reason, because they were meant to be different. 
They and and when you look into Melchizedek and that that word, Cindy picks up a different uh, energy. She picks up something very very different than say if you did Yahweh or L. And Yahweh and L are not interchangeable energies. They're not. They're very distinguished, different energies. Mm-hmm. You know, it's weird when I when I, I look at that word, I see patterns. I, I see magic. I see something that's not Mel- understood. Mel- the word Melchizedek. I, I see magic. I see patterns. I see uh, different... Um, it's not a person it's it's a thing so i think that this is an energy that people can um somehow lasso it's yeah it's a magic so you know if you know this energy in melchizedek you know how to use it so i don't think it's a he i think it's a thing and anybody can have access to it if they just know absolutely and then when we distinguished the energies of l which was also known as a Canaanite storm god, and Yahweh, very, very different energies. And with El, you get the feeling of something creative in a cloud-like setting. You know, I <clears throat> I think it is actually plasma. I think it's a cloud plasma. So I, I, I see a big white cloud, um, but that's just my conscious way of interpreting it uh, when I reach the energy, when I look at the energy. Um, that it's a form of plasma that can be manipulated and utilized if you're at a certain frequency you have access to this plasma which would make sense when you know you think of the early canaanites uh referring to el as a storm god you know a, a creative force an energy these these are those forces that if we want to shift our perspectives and start looking at the titans and the titanic energies again in line with the original programming of the true creator of this uh, this universe that we find ourselves in the natural matrix now the other real fascinating part of this when you go uh salem and shalim you look at this uh it's a pagan god in the canaanite religion Mentioned in inscriptions found in Ugarit. Ooh, there's other interesting things in Ugarit as well that we have found. So identified Shalim as the god of the dusk and Shahar as the god of the dawn. And of course, Venus is represented by Shalim as the evening star and Shahar as the morning star. So when you think about Shalim... Salem, Melchizedek, and, well, what else is referred to as the morning? Lucifer. Lucifer, right? And Lucifer has been equated with Venus as well. Evening and morning star. It being correlated into Melchizedek and the Melchizedek priesthood, which is perhaps not so much a priesthood as an understanding of how to utilize the true magic that's available to all of us in this original creation. So, you know, this is fascinating. When you go on farther, you see an Ugaritic myth known as the gracious and most beautiful gods, plural, describes Shalim and his brother Shahar as the offspring of El, So it's interesting, you know, the aspects of Venus as the morning and evening star being part of the natural order, natural correlating to El, not Yahweh. Yahweh is the usurping energy of the control system. Through two women he meets at the seashore. They are both nursed by the lady. Ah, the lady, like a goddess energy. And this is saying likely Asherah and have appetites as large as one lip to the earth and one lip to the heavens. In other words, uh, there's, they're associated also with the sun goddess. So this is where, you know, the control system has m- just smushed everything together, mashed it all together, not distinguished between uh, things that it should be distinguishing th- uh, apart, and also 
it's done just the inverse at the same time. So you have this whole character caricature of, of Lucifer, which really is, again, mistranslations, misunderstandings, that then become just made truth by the vast majority of people because they don't even know the original stories. They don't know the original language or the original setting. And it just becomes the norm that things are viewed in those terms. So like when you say Lucifer, you automatically think dark control system, even though it means light bringer. The evening star and the morning star would be a light bringer. And, you know, again, it's on both sides of, of, of uh, the night and it's on both sides of the light. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. Now, Asherah, again, we, we find in these texts uh, something else interesting. I'll give this to Cindy White type. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I mean, Venus is an energy that is, I mean, it's appreciation. It's love. It's devotion. It's, you know, enjoying different cultures. And they've just made everything out to be so backwards. Which we've talked about before. Again, when you go back to the 8th century BC, you will find Yahweh and his Asherah. And so if you think that the original version of things was monolithic, (laughs) monotheistic, it wasn't. And, you know, history of the vanished goddess Asherah. You know, this is an actual representation of, of Yahweh and this is older than anything biblical that we have. Anything biblical. This is Asherah on the back and Yahweh in the forefront. It's older than anything in the Bible. And that's because the Bible is just, you know, it, it's the modern revision. It's the modern revision of older stories. And in fact, you know, again, all this was wiped out and destroyed as much as possible. And there are references. There are references that are still there in the Bible about Asherah. And you can find it. But you, again, have to go and dig. You have to do a little digging to to find this. But what we have here with Yahweh and Asherah, or goddess counterpart, is older than anything we have in the Bible. The Masoretes. Uh, are a priestly class uh, of scribes that have been revising and copying texts, you know, going back to ancient times. But there was a big revision that was done uh, from like 800 uh, AD on up to the present time that got rid of a lot of the original intent. And this is all part of what the power uh, structure does. So it's fascinating, you know, to see these things. Now, Salem, peace, perfect, from Shalem, you know, Shalom, Shalem. It, it, it's kind of a blessing, you know, peace be with you, Salem. And, and then you could see the direct correlations that could take you straight to Lucifer. And this is what a lot of people have discovered and and maybe not had a clarity in their mind but this is what the system does it makes you know everything inverse upside down and inside out it's part of the great reveal and you know it's it's part of what we should be looking at when we look deeper so again is this a sign of new beginnings for the u.s and the end of the old way i think so does it really matter when we look to the sign, I, I think, again, they, they tell us what to look for. They, they get us expecting things. I think we do have also um, a trauma response in our DNA because we've been through this before. Oh, yeah. You know, here you see thousands point glasses at sun to watch eclipse. This is 1918's eclipse, which is following a fairly similar path. Um, a little bit off because, you know, the 19, uh, 19, the 2017 started over here and ended over in um, South Carolina, Oregon, to South Carolina. So a slightly different path. But, you know, coast to coast, absolutely. And when we look at these are all the total eclipses from 1776 to 2017. 
and you see the 1918 that we were just re referencing. 1918 was the last year of World War I, also the year of the Spanish flu. Uh huh. Very, very, very interesting. Absolutely. The other thing to add to this is the Pluto return. Astrologically, we've talked about that. That really, the energies there um, on February 22nd, 2022. And then immediately after that Pluto return, Putin goes into Ukraine uh, just on cue. Because Putin's part of the whole system. All the world leaders are. So when we're looking from Babylon to America, there's no difference. Nothing has changed. It's the same system in place, the same system. They're just doing it all again. This is why it echoes in our genetic memory. Because, uh, you know, there was an eclipse in Babylon, too, right before it fell. And so Babylon ended up falling to the Persians. And Jeremiah 51, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. Uh, and I know a lot of people will automatically associate that with Revelation. But it's first in Jeremiah. Ah, the book of Jeremiah. When we look to Revelation, what's the oldest book of Revelation we have? Well, you know, this one right here, Codex Sinaiticus, is a complete one that does include uh, revelations. It's from somewhere probably around 400 AD. So in other words, it, it's from literally, uh, it's after the Council of Nicaea. It's 300 plus years after John lived, li really lived, and, and Yeshua was here perhaps 400 years after, you know, th those happenings actually happen. That's a lot of time to change things, and it's a lot of times to get organized with um, what the story is going to be. When you look to the five ages of man given to us by Hesiod, 8th century B.C., this echoes exactly what we find in the Vedic tradition, where man in the Golden Age lives an incredibly long life of of tens of thousands, if not a hundred thousand years. How could that possibly be? Well, our bodies are much different. You know, absolutely, everything is much different, and we're not being purposefully terminated by the system constantly, purposely poisoned by the system constantly, purposefully led to killing ourselves by the system constantly. This predates anything biblical, anything. And it's clear. And it does come from older sources too. But in the golden age, who ruled? Kronos. Kronos literally translates to time, but it's a titan. And the titans are the elemental forces. Mortals lived like the gods, never knowing sorrow or toil. When they died, it is as if they were falling asleep. Nobody worked. No, that's their system to make you miserable. You don't really have to work. If, if we're not in this system, we can simply do what we want to do. Because also, the earth was a totally different place. The bounty that was just abundant was everywhere. Nobody had to really work at finding food. Food was abundant. Why do you think they give us GMO seeds? It's so you can't go ahead and count on them to replant themselves. No, they're terminator seeds. Yeah, absolutely. This is the system. This is the system. Spring never ended because the earth wasn't tilted at 23 and a half degrees because the moon was not in place. And that's another big, big reveal. People are starting to realize there's something screwy with the moon. It's even described as a period in which people aged backwards. When they died, they became daimones. Oh, they became demons. No, it was a Greek word which means they became nature spirits and overseers and guides of those that are enfleshed. Ah, so the system turned it into demons. Yes, you know, this is that whole concept of fallen angels is given to you by the system. It it truly is. And it's made so that you can't see things ever clearly. Uh, yeah, they roam the earth in a positive sense, helping those that are embodied. Zeus, 
and the Greek gods, which are really, again, those are your Anunnaki and Draconian controlled beings, including the offspring of the Anunnaki themselves, which were uh, monstrous at, at times and literally did consume people in more than one way. Uh, that part is, is, is real, but it's, again, it's the control system that did that. They overcame the Titans, so the Anunnaki and Draconian control system overcame the natural order in the Golden Age ended. Yeah, absolutely. And then you have the Silver Age. And this during Hesiod's Silver Age, the Olympian god Zeus was in charge. So this is when the, the control grid started to come in. But we still knew things and people still uh, lived a long life. In fact, a child could play for 100 years before growing up. Yeah, our lifespan was more like a thousand plus years. Thousands. And again, oh, it, it's the system that, that poisons things. And then it gets into the age of the heroes and the Iron Age. And this is getting into all sorts of giants and, and beings like Heracles, etc. And Zeus ultimately destroying uh, the world with a flood. And then we get to, you know, the, the current ice, Iron Age and our Kali Yuga. The, the story between the Greek version of these ages and the Kali and the Dwapara and Treta and you know again they're, they're just they're right on whether we're talking Greek or whether we're talking the ancient Vedic they're really in line and again it was universal knowledge but the system is constantly doing this to us mm -hmm. you know I am picking up uh, after this eclipse we're going to be going through at least 11 years of some type of purge now this purge this purge energy i'm picking up uh, even though things might get difficult i don't exactly know what what it's going to look like but the feel of it is that there's going to be a change in leadership uh how things are run in this country and it's going to be just one segment of many that move us um, out of a dark age and into more of a light age and understanding but it's going to take several of these little um, inklings in time it's going to take a lot of different changes a changeover in power uh, switching things around uh, people changing the way they want to live people no longer tolerating the current control system i mean i'm picking up about 11 years of that after after this coming eclipse so this is why i think we're kind of telling people to get ready and be prepared and most of all spiritually prepare yourself spiritually because i do believe honestly with these eclipses they put us in alignment they change our frequency they bring our frequency up with each eclipse come our frequency goes up just a little just a little and as that happens we have to change how we do things we might our bodies might need to purge um, we might you know take some different turns in life and do some different things and have some pretty big changes and in order to go through that you need to be physically strong emotionally strong have a solid practice in place and don't let yourself be led around by any one religion no this is your journey it's yours yours and only yours Absolutely. And, you know, some traditions are more distorted than other ones. You can definitely get more truth if you look into the mystery traditions as far as the Western mindset goes. So, you know, delving into uh, things like Hermeticism, uh, Gnosticism, going into the Kabbalah uh, and looking at the, the mystery side of things will give you a far more truth than the fundamentalist side because the fundamentalist system is their system. It, this is their system. When you look to this, this is a translation from the King James Version. King James, who was the head of all Masonic lodges in, the, in what is now the UK, basically, in England and Scotland, Royalty. Why would you tr trust anything coming from royalty? Because this is the power structure. 
And, you know, the Catholic Church is really the Constantinian Church, which, again, why would you trust anything that came from a Roman Empire emperor? It, it just defies logic. Thus says the Lord. And, okay, yeah, okay, and it goes on. And this is, this is what we were talking about, Jeremiah 51. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up Babylon, and against them that dwell in it, in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. So it's really the control system, you know, saying, you know, again, um, I make the rules. I pick which nation I'm going to rise up. I pick which nation I'm going to destroy. When we look to the actual names of God using the literal translations from Hebrew, this is what Yahweh says. I will stir up a destructive wind against Babylon and, and against the people who live in Leb Kamai. And you can see going down here, verse 51, uh, 51 5, Israel and Judah haven't been abandoned by their Elohim, Yahweh Seboeth. So it, it, let's look back, 51 5. For Israel has not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, the, of the Lord of hosts. Ah, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. But in Hebrew, it's really saying Israel and Judah haven't been abandoned by their Elohim, their mighty one, their ruling party, their judge, Yahweh. Although their land is guilty of abandoning Kadosh Yisrael. So you can see how it's been distorted and twisted. So you think it's all talking about one, one being. It's not. It's talking about multiple beings. Elohim is plural. Their Elohim. So Yahweh is the ruler, the judge of Israel and Judah. But that's it. Not the whole world. It's, again, when you look to the original source in the Sumerian writings, it's, it's the Anunnaki who divide. The Anunnaki and the, the Ijiji divide up the tribes, and they each pick certain tribes, to be their own playthings, to be their own slaves, their own personal slaves. This is time for the vengeance of Yahweh. Babylon was a golden cup in Yahweh's hand. Aha, uh -huh. Yahweh has judged Babylon. Yahweh has brought about our victory. Let's announce in Zion what Yahweh, our God, our mighty one, our ruler, our particular Anunnaki has done. This is exactly what, you know, the fundamentalists that haven't bothered to look deeper and just simply accept. Well, you know, you, unfortunately, more than half of us accepted the science and more than half of us have issues with that. This is the same thing. And these people that don't look deeper, they do burn witches. And on their counterparts, you know, <laughs> they do create jihads, and they will exterminate everybody because they believe it's the will of God. But no, it's, it's, it's the will of the control system. This is not the will of the creator. And really, when we're referencing this, they've even stolen this term. Because, you know, if you look at Elohim, in, in this text, it, it really is referring to the leadership of the draconian Anunnakian, Ejigian, secret service, etc., etc., all those little secret societies. This, this is the dark leadership that they're talking about. When the real term Elohim originally is really, really talking about beings of, of a more benevolent nature, the mighty ones, the real creators, but this is a twisting and a distortion, again, of everything that's natural. This is how they take um, El and say it's the same thing as Yahweh when it was never the same thing. It was never the same real energy, never the same real beings. They've just made it this way. This is how we can worship people and give people, um, you know, a, a holiday of, of somebody that was a slave trader and somebody that helped initiate a major genocide in Columbus. They'll do the same thing with Gil Bates. They'll do the same thing with uh, Trudeau's and Macron's. They'll put them up on a pedestal. They'll rewrite the history so the whole world worships Gil Bates. 
This is what people are doing when they mention the name of Yahweh. You, you can like, <laughs> you know, in, in 50 years from now, you can interchange the names Bill Gates and Yahweh. It, it's the same thing. And this is what we've been trying to say for a very long time. And I, I think people, understandably, they get upset because it's their belief system and they believe all of it is good and all of it is true and that no one would really lie to them. I mean, it's really hard. And, and those who ta teach Sunday school, those who preach in their churches, they they don't look deep enough either. They're not. It's not that they are deliberately lying, but they're not deliberately reading it either. So everyone just follows along with a very, very big lie. And so many of the star star children have come here to shine light on this lie and to just jump both feet in the system and transmute it in such a way that the truth can be seen. And it's not an easy job. I mean, we work on a lot of you guys, and I tell you, you're out there you're lonely you're trying to get along with other people you want to have friends you want to be able to go out and do stuff but you're looking around you and everyone everyone is still in the system and they're speaking the lie and you know it and you can feel it and it makes it hard but that's why we're here we're here to help each other we're here to try to shine some light on this for you and let you know you're not alone and things are going to change and they will get better just keep telling yourself that Things are getting better. Say that to yourself every day, no matter what happens. Yeah, they play with human lives just like you're playing a game of Risk or Stratego or some sort of game of World Conquest. When you look to the city of Babylon and you see the different gates, the Gate of Sin, uh -uh, and right next to the Marduk Gate, right next to the Ishtar Gate, Enlo Gate, Shamash. And, and we look to... Uh, you know, what we have with Sinai, Sin, I, AI, <laughs> there's a little, they're giggling at that. Mm -hmm. Sin, AI, Sinai, yeah, and then our sin, you know, the moon god, uh, you know, all of this over here, the whole Sinai Peninsula was off limits. Uh, it was basically land of the gods, and this was uh, a section that they kept, off limits to most humans for a very, very long time until they went behind the scenes. So when, you know, Moses is told, ah, oh, you're standing on holy land. Well, it's, it's, it doesn't even really translate as holy land. It, it, it's restricted land. You're on private property that only uh, Anunnaki and Ajiji are allowed to cross over. And so with the fall of the Babylonian Empire, which again, Babylon, where did Abram come from? Abram came from Ur, which is, you know, in this area too, very near um, Babylon. Y you ended up having the rise of the um, Persian Empire. And all these empires just morph. They change forms. You know, the biblical uh, point of view is always about what's happening to the Jewish people. It's their, their tradition that is focused on one tribe, you know, captivity of Judah in Babylon, and then the Persians take over and, and things are better under the Persians than they were the Babylonians. And this is why you have a lot of that anger, you know, towards Babylon and you're going to fall, you're going to be destroyed. And it's because you did this to us. But it's fascinating to see, you know, that history really repeats itself. It really, really repeats itself as you see the extent of the Persian Empire from 539 to 333 BC. And then you had the, the Greeks and Alexander the, the Great coming in and he went all the way you know, into India. Um, it's just one after another. They, they play with humans again like they're playing a, a game. This is really what they do. So, you know, when you look at the fall of Babylon, it was preceded by two eclipses, according to many sources. Now, when I look deeper, it was a lunar and a solar. It wasn't multiple solars that I saw any uh, evidence of, which typically, yeah, a lunar and a solar, they come within two weeks of each other uh, just by the way that the movement of the planets is. So, you know, is is the fall of Babylon being reenacted? Well, I think I think that's seriously the intent of the control system. 
They want to get this across. They want us to keep thinking through their lens. They want us looking at, at everything through a biblical uh, or a Quranic lens because it's all part of the Abrahamic tradition. Yeah, it, it's coming out of the same source, which is ultimately coming from uh, the control system. It's fascinating to look at this. It's fascinating to look at their policies and what happened and you know, what did they do and, and, and what was happening in that time. Well, the Neo-Babylonians, because there, there was an older Babylonian empire and then the newer Neo, Neo-Babylonian Empire, had pursued a policy of population transfer. Oh, isn't that an interesting one? Wait a minute. Population transfer? What, what do you mean? Are, are you saying they're taking one eth ethnic group and they're shifting them over somewhere else? That's exactly what we're saying. This is what they did. They moved people around. They caused mass migrations of people. It had pursued a policy of population transfer right before its fall. This, this is what we're seeing right now. They move people. This mass migration is part of what they do before they collapse an empire. So this is what they're doing to us now. So yeah, you know, we are Babylon the Great in that sense. And even though there's a huge difference in, in time, it's the same old thing. And in fact, if you really look at genetics and you go by haplogroups and study, you know, the different haplogroups, which is talking to um, different genetic markers and their origins as the different peoples, you'll see that this thing has been going on forever. They, they are always mixing up the, the pie. The genetic pie is always changing. They're shifting. So they had mass migrations of people back then, right before the fall and destruction of Babylon the Great. In fact, this type of mass migration, often imposed by state policy or international authority, most frequently on the basis of ethnicity or religion, but also due to economic development, banishment or exile is a similar process. It is forcibly applied to individuals and groups. Population transfer differs more than simply technically from individually motivated migration. At times of war, the act of fleeing from a danger or famine often blurs the differences. If a state can preserve the fiction that migrations are the results of innumerable personal decisions, the state may be able to claim that it's not to blame for the displacement. And this is from the CIA, FBI themselves, Wikipedia. Yeah, I mean, they'll put this out there. Liebenstrom. Ah, Liebenstrom. Do you remember that? That's the concept of expansionism. More, more room for the, the Volk, the, the people. Yeah, we need more space. We're, we're just too densely populated. You have a lot of space. You don't need it. Yeah, uh, you know, this, this, is, this never stops. This is what they do, and it's even out here. Even they're admitting it. It's right there. So, yeah, they've made us, you know, Babylon the Great, purposefully. It's not the will of the creator of this universe. It's their will. Truly, it's Satan's world. Will, and it's Satan's world. It even says that in the Bible. When you look to some of the displacements and historical background going back here to Hezekiah in Jerusalem, 701 B.C., 200,150 people were transferred to other lands in the Neo-Assyrian Empire. They did it back then. 200,000 people in 701 B.C. So if we, if we trust what the control system is giving us as the population of the entire world, being maybe a hundred million, maybe being 50 million. That's an enormous percentage of people that are moving. There's an enormous percentage of people that are moving right now, don't you think? So, you know, I have all these links for you guys. These are going into the dating of the eclipses um, and the fall of Babylon. As you'll find, and I found uh, a few um, videos that were done um 
just saying this is the will of God and et cetera, but they didn't give any details or any real facts or delve into it at all, just besides just assuming it's the will of God. Look deeper. Look deeper. Understand what the control system does. This is what it does. It manipulates. It uses the same tactics time and time and time again. And the only reason it uses those same tactics is because it continues to work. <laughs> it continues to work. We really need to dig in and not allow this to continue. And I just wanted to touch on really quick with Nineveh and the story of Nineveh, how their God was giving them 40 days, 40 days from the time Jonah got there and warned everybody, you know, if you don't change your ways, God is going to come down and, and do something for you. Well, 40 days after the eclipse here is Pentecost. And we look at Pentecost and being able to hear from God I think it's voice of God technology. So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people are hearing voice of God technology. They did it to Jonah. They'll do it to you. So I think we need to watch for that too. A lot of new technologies coming out. And Mike had a really creepy dream about that too. I mean, it was very specific. And maybe we can hit that in another video. But um, I just want people to be mindful. Absolutely. Beware of the nanu nanu that can make you think that you're hearing the voice of God. Just relax, take a deep breath, and chill out. This guy is. He's a cutie. So, you know, again, if you really want to just get to what is God, ultimately the true creator, and it might seem hard from this angle, uh, and I see a ton of comments where people are saying, how could the creator be nothing but love? Um, because this is not our natural state of being, and we get into more of that on Heart's Home. We haven't done too much on Heart's Home lately because simply I feel like there's not a lot of time to have patience uh, to get people to look at it So, because Heart's Home hasn't grown to that part uh, like Evolutionary had with the subscribership. So it, it just feels like, you know, we got to uh, talk about everything right now wherever people are are listening but heart's home is a safe place if you don't want to get into any of the news it and there's lots of stuff over there as far as uh, just focusing on true spirituality which has nothing to do with dogma it, it's way above dogma dogma is made to divide spirituality is seeing the unity in all things in the bigger picture and what is our bigger picture this isn't a learning experience this is a temporary experience uh, again, there was a troll um, <clears throat> that basically left a comment. I think his name was literally, he, he put his name as Herman Dingleberry. That just tells you where the mindset is of that particular person um, talking about um, self-defense and all. You know, I, we realize that when the bodies are no longer working, we go on. It, we, we totally know that. We don't have any doubts about that. And yeah, we, we're not worried about uh, the loss of the physical body per se, although life is a blessing and life should be cherished. So we should always have gratitude for everything that we have uh, and, and pray over your food and bless your food, whatever that is, whether it's you know, vegetable or, or if it's a being, an animal or a fish or a bird or whatever, pray for the soul of that being because that soul is also the one consciousness that embodies us all. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.